The medicines and vaccines have an incredible track record over many decades of treating and preventing diseases right around the world. In the UK, uh, they've contributed to an extra 10 years of life expectancy since the 1960s, a doubling of cancer survival over the last 40 years. And HIV has gone from a, a, really a death sentence to a chronic disease for those patients that get access to the right medicines. Looking to the future, the pharmaceutical industry is spending hundreds of billions of pounds to develop new medicines. 7,000 medicines are in development and many of those medicines will never reach the patient, unfortunately, because many of them will fail in the 10 to 12 years it takes to develop those medicines. But that failure is worth going through. It, producing medicines is a highly risky, very expensive process, but it's worth going through that failure and it's worth spending those billions of pounds in order to treat diseases that cannot be treated today. And that's exactly what the pharmaceutical industry is doing. Well, pharmaceutical companies can't pick whatever price they like. They have to think very carefully about how much value that medicine is offering patients and society. And the NHS is a very strong customer in this country uh, to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies. The National Institute of Health and Care Excellence looks very carefully at the clinical data around how well a medicine works and looks at the price and works out if the price being charged by the company is worth it for the benefits that it brings patients and, and the health system. NICE is widely respected around the world as one of the most rigorous uh, institutions that scrutinizes the value for money of medicines prices. And so when, a, when NICE does approve a medicine, the NHS can have a lot of confidence that it represents very good value for money. This year, the pharmaceutical industry signed an agreement with the UK government that will give the NHS complete certainty on how much money it will spend on branded medicines, that includes all new medicines, over the next five years. We've been managing spend on medicines in this way through voluntary agreements for over 60 years, and this new agreement includes more measures than ever before to ensure that patients in this country can get access to new treatments as quickly as possible. The scheme works by capping the rate at which NHS spend on medicines can grow. If the NHS ends up spending more money on medicines than allowed by that cap, then the industry automatically pays back. So as well as that UK-wide financial cap on medicines, the agreement also includes measures specifically targeted to England to ensure we've got better ways for pharmaceutical companies to work with the system on individual products. Another very important commitment from the NHS is to identify five classes of medicine that are likely to add the most health gain to NHS patients and to really make sure that access to those medicines is on a par with other European countries. We're going through an incredibly exciting period for pharmaceutical innovation right now. This agreement should mean that NHS patients are able to access treatments as quickly as possible, but in a way that shouldn't give any financial concern for, for the NHS. We typically think of three major phases of a medicine's life cycle. The first is research and development, which is where companies put in hundreds of billions of pounds to develop and test uh, new medicines. The second phase is when a medicine finally gets a license, that company has exclusive rights to sell that medicine for a period of time, as long as the price is uh, deemed to be appropriate by bodies like NICE. After that period of exclusive rights, which typically lasts about 10 years, is the third and final phase of a medicine's life cycle. And when a medicine reaches that stage, it stays there forever. This is why a month's supply of cholesterol treatment today costs less than the price of a cup of coffee. So these three phases of the life cycle of medicines are incredibly important because it allows companies to invest in medicines of the future, but it also makes sure that in the long run, medicines become very affordable. When the medicines life cycle works appropriately, for every medicine that comes onto the market and creates a new cost for the NHS, older medicines are losing their patent exclusivity and becoming much, much cheaper. So the medicines life cycle working well uh, helps keep spend on medicines under control.
Well, unfortunately, despite the fact that many medicines have actually been invented in the UK, um, the NHS has been typically slower to introduce new medicines compared to other countries. So uh, for every 100 patients in countries like France and Germany, for example, only 18 patients would get access to a new medicine in the first year of launch here in the UK. And that's something we really need to turn around. Um, the only way in which the NHS is going to cope, particularly with an aging population in the coming years, is to make the best use of new technologies. So we are working with government and the NHS to try and turn this around. Uh, that's going to require effort on all sides, including the industry, and it means we're going to have to work together uh, earlier in the process. We're going to have to make sure the NHS understands what we are developing so that the right planning can be done to make sure these medicines are introduced as quickly as possible. So there's a very exciting future for medicines. The pace of scientific change is incredible at the moment. And the more science develops, the more we understand about disease. And the more we have a more precise understanding of how disease works, the more pharmaceutical companies are able to be very precise in how they design medicines and, and target medicines in the future. This is why we're beginning to see examples of uh, physicians being able to use patients' own cells to design uh, very personalized treatments that can sometimes result in cures. These radically new types of treatment can be challenging to introduce into the NHS and that's why it's very important for increasingly for the industry to work very closely with the NHS and physicians to plan for the future uh, to make sure that patients get access as quickly as possible.